we neglected to ask each of you to introduce yourself very briefly and say one thing. How did you connect or interact with Bill and what capacity? So, uh, Henry, welcome to see you. Can Hi, you introduce Henry. yourself and tell us in what capacity you interacted with Bill? I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I would, we can. I, I, okay, I signed on to Zoom and then I had to update everything and it was just any help. Uh, I, I came to UT and the Institute in the fall of 1972. Most of you weren't around at that time. And uh, Bill, you know, was uh, was key uh, in my accepting the invitation to come to UT. Uh, he was head of the Institute at the time, a remarkable man. And, he, you know, in terms of recruitment, he, he showed me the Institute, he showed me the library all of that kind of thing. And then when I when I came in the fall of 72, um, he immediately made me a member of a committee over in the Institute and made me feel welcome. I mean, from there on in, it was just smooth sailing. It was really something. Uh, I've read a variety of, of comments that people made on uh, uh, on memorials and other ways. And the one that comes to mind right away is he was he was such a caballero. I mean, he really was a gentleman. And um, I don't know what you would have, what you needed to do to really upset Bill. I suppose he got upset from time to time, but he was very level. Um, he took things as they came. Um, he was very welcoming to to new people. Um, he managed the institute, so far as I could tell, extremely well. Um, he was as good as we could get. And uh, for a young uh, you know, faculty member coming into the 1970s, I couldn't have wished for anything better. Brian, can you tell us how did you interact with Bill and introduce yourself? No, uh, Bill was very important to me intellectually. Um, I, I've been in the Institute uh, based in Manchester. I was at Manchester University of Manchester, and I came to work in Latin America, Guatemala with Rick Adams, etc. Um, in the 60s. Uh, did, I didn't no um, Bill Glade at that time, but I became not only good friends with Adams, but also with Ollie Browning, etc. And one of the persons that they told me about, and this was coming in the late 1960s, early 1970s. You remember that Bill, though a Texan in origin, did come back to Texas in <laughs> 1970 to actually take up a position as director of the uh, Institute of American Studies and in the economics department as well. So they, and Harley and Rick told and said, look, you've got to, you know, read what he's written, because at that time he had just finished his book on Latin American economies. That's right. I did read it. It was, a, I found it a, a very stimulating book. And for, in my prejudices, of course, for an economist, incredibly broad-minded. He was more a political economist in that book than he was. He was a narrow economist, uh, concerned with counting numbers, etc., and formal uh, applying formal calculations to his data. He had a beautiful uh, account of Latin America in the late 1960s, and how they had got to where they were. And this was incredibly helpful to me in my in my book, uh, Cities of Peasants, which was published in 78. You'll find there are quite a, new, a number of references to, um, to Bill Glade, um, because, you know, that's one of the one of the authors, along with, you know, others that 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 uh, that are also good scholars that that I use extensively, and so it was it was delight to um, see him, uh, uh, to me you know to read him and then of course eventually to meet him. I think I met him for the first time in in the about seventy five seventy six uh, because I did my uh, myself came came permanently to Texas in nineteen eighty six. But I, I kept up contact in Texas. They invited me to be a visiting kind of professor there, and and, and Bill was very welcoming 
when I did come, I think it was 76 in, yes, it must have been 76 in, in Austin. And I thought he was a great guy. He was my concept of a gentleman. Mm -hmm. That's an English gentleman. <laughs> and, and it's, and uh, Brian, do you remember when he served as director of the Mexico Center? We can all find those dates. Do you remember? No, it, it, he, he ne you, see, we've been, well, he, he, you're part of that too. That um, remember the Mexican Center, as we inverted commas know it today, was only founded in um, 19, 1986. When you arrived, okay. Yeah, when when I came to Texas and I was holding chair in U.S.-Mexico relations, etc., the only one then that was active, and um, and it seemed to me absurd that we didn't have, you know, an Mexican center within Lilas. Mm -hmm. There was a Mexican center outside of Lilas, which Stanley Ross had been running, and I think um, probably Bill then. <laughs> may have run that for a time too because it was something in the gift of the the dean and whoever he appointed it wasn't part of the process of the institute and that's what we changed in 86 but bill would have headed the uh, mexican center because he's certainly a, a fine specialist on mexico in um better than me in that, that, that sense in um uh, he would have probably uh, taken that that task on in 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 the period up to because uh, he was director if I remember from seventy one to to well it would be oh yes right eighty six Rick was yeah, to eighty six okay. so I think Bill um, put down the directorship of of Lilas in eighty five and um and previous to that i i guess he would have held he'd have uh, worked the mexican center okay so that's Thank the period but we're not going, afterwards we're going to ask raul now to go next how did you interact with dr blade um so i arrived at ut in 1999 um and bill glade was director of the mexico center in 1999 so i don't know how long his tenure lasted or when it started but he was certainly uh, director at that point um and um you know um speaking of mentoring i mean it was clear to me from the beginning that he sort of actively sought to mentor me so he would invite me uh to dinners to give uh to give a talk i remember i gave a talk um through the mexico center i think it was to the advisory board of the mexico center um and then after the talk he came up um and offered some very helpful comments um on my project because it was my book you know my dissertation book project and it was an economics type topic social security privatization so he's very useful things um to say uh, about it um and as people have said he's always such a gentleman i mean we would go out of his way to help you to be kind to um um and also tremendously erudite person uh, i mean as brian mentioned uh, this is not your typical economist he was not narrow um he was not you know strictly mathematical uh, but really had tremendously broad knowledge of of the region and a tremendous sort of history of engagement so I'll, one other thing i remember was that um, when we had uh, the Ricardo Lagos, the former president of Chile, up here for a conference on the Latin American left, um, Ricardo Lagos at that conference went out of the way to thank Bill Glade for his both his friendship and his sponsorship, because apparently during um, military rule in Chile, Bill played an important role in getting uh lagos out of the country um and you know giving him a i don't know if it was a year-long appointment or what have you um um at ut austin um to essentially get him out of harm's way um i, I believe this was in the 70s uh so um so bill you know bill knew everybody and he almost seemed to know everything as well i mean very very impressive uh, and, and generous uh, person. Thank you. Uh, Patricia? Uh, 
Okay. Um, well, gosh, I have a somewhat um, similar story of being so warmly, um, um, well, not just greeted, but recruited by uh, Bill Blade. And, um, and it gave me um, a sense of that I was entering a, a group of comrades, of colleagues, and uh, who were as passionate about Latin America as, as I was. Um, and then he also took steps to put in place uh, right away a joint program in planning my field and Latin American studies. And, and that would be my program to run, he said, <laughs> go with it and um, we'll support you. So, um, um, oh, and uh, this was in 1979. He also topped off my, the salary offer with a couple of grand extra, uh, boosting my starting salary from up to $19,000. <laughs> Um, but it was, um, and then when I got to campus, he was so good at introducing me around, you know, that's, that's how I met some of you who were on this call <laughs> because he introduced me around and I felt I was, um, part of a, part of a group and, and, um, over the years, he got me involved in ELAS, um, uh, efforts, including the governance committee, and um, it was a it was a nice counterbalance or complement to um, to my home base in planning program in the School of Architecture. So it opened me up to a, a broader part of campus and made me feel really really at home. And of course, um, the occasional funding possibilities that came up through Lilas were, were important to me and, and helped out when I was doing um, um, studio courses in Mexico, or also I did a studio course that involved uh, Chile, Peru, and other, other countries. Um, that kind of financial assistance helped from time to time um, or for uh, research or um, or even um, publishing uh, assistance. So, so really, uh, uh, Bill was made made UT accessible, welcoming, and collegial for me. Thank you, Peter. Can you can you go next? Thank you, Paloma. I, I actually had much less uh, interaction with Bill compared to my colleagues here on the screen. Um, I first met Bill uh, when I had been offered the position of director of the Institute. I went to Washington, he was working in Washington, uh, and he uh, 